Hi, I'm Brady and I want to show you my ASP.NET Core React single page application template that I've been working on. When I first created this template a few months back, I recorded a video demonstrating it, but I've made quite a few changes to the template, including building out the React front end quite a bit and also bumping the dependencies for both .NET Core and some of the, the JavaScript dependencies on the front end, so I wanted to show the updates I've made. I'm going to do things in a bit of reverse order so that I can show the full provisioning and deployment process that's built into this template with the help of Ansible. So the first thing I'm going to do is clone the repository into a, temp into a directory called template and then I'm going to install the dependencies of yarn install. On the readme I mentioned using npm install but I'm using yarn here because it's faster. Once that's done installing, I'm going to create an ops host file, which is required for the Ansible provisioning and deployment roles. In the readme here, I explain how to create that file, and there is a template to go off of. Notice that the yarn install is going to install the JavaScript dependencies for the front end, but also the .NET Core dependencies in the back end. So it does uh, the install for all dependencies. Now I'm going to create that ops host file, which I mentioned. Uh, but I've already got a host file prepared uh, so that I don't have to open it because it contains lots of secrets. <laughs> uh, but I want to at least grab it to show you the name of the server I have defined in here. So the production web variable is defined as template.etidbits.com. So that's where this app is going to deploy to. So to get that set up, I'm going to go over to DigitalOcean and create a droplet. You could just as well use Amazon Web Services, Azure, or your favorite cloud provider. But the Ansible scripts are written to, to target Ubuntu 16. But they might work with other versions as well, or other distributions. So I'm going to go ahead and create that droplet. Once this droplet creation is done, I'm going to take the IP address and create an A record for template.dptidbuts.com using that IP address on my DNS config. So my DNS name server is Cloudflare. Yours might not be, but wherever your DNS uh, settings are, that's where you want to make this change. So I'm creating an A record for template so that I can set up template.dptidbuts.com. I'm going to use the IP address that DigitalOcean just provided, and I'm going to turn off Cloudflare for this A record. Okay, so that's all I need to do to get that set up. Now I'm going to run 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 provision prod to actually provision the droplet. I must have run that against the same. Oh, right, because I've created this before. So, I'm going to create my notes. My, I'm going to remove my notes for this file to make this simpler. Yes, I'm going to have the, the authorization to continue. The reason I got that warning is because I created a digital ocean droplet on the same domain whenever I was testing things out. So, that's uh, running the Ansible playbook to provision the new server and I'm going to let that run. That'll take a while because it's installing a whole host of things including Nginx and .NET Core and Postgres. So in the meantime I'm going to open up the repository here and I'm going to fire it up using yarn start. That's going to it's going to use Docker to spin up Postgres and Mailcatcher, which is used for local email delivery. Once the startup process is complete, you should be able to access it on port 5000. There we go. So now it's listening. So I'm going to go here, refresh. Okay, so the app is up and running. It's no longer a hello world on a black screen, but uh, it's a 
sign in screen. I already have a user that's been seated that will allow you to log in immediately, but I also want to show you that you can register a new user. I'm going to take my address. Once I click sign up, it's going to deliver an email, but it's actually going to deliver it via mail catcher. So you can access the mail catcher interface on port 1080. And the registration email I sent was sent right here. So I'm going to click the link. And that confirmed the email address, and I could sign in with that user that I set up. But I'm going to go ahead and, and use the default user because I don't remember the password that I used from the, uh, the new user registration. But this user at test and password is just defaulted in the template so that it's easy to sign in with that user all the time. So I click sign in. I'm taken to a, a template dashboard. Again, some of this stuff is not built out. So you've got uh, some fake links and things like that. But the sign out works. Uh, I'll give you a nice little alert about the sign out. If I sign back in, I can search here. The search works well. Clear the search. Yep, search is working well. I can edit. If I leave that blank, I'll be it. Validation. Put updated. Stephen's last name. I can delete the record. And add a new one. I'm going to leave the email address as invalid. I'm going to work there. Okay, so it added it. So it's a pretty simple thread application, but this is all using React. And in the template source, you can see the, the templates that I'm using, the React code that I'm using to, to accomplish this. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out. I'm going to look at my provisioning script to see how that's going. That's finished. Great. So now I'm going to run the deploy script. So the idea is that you would provision a server once so that it's able to be deployed to, and then you would run the deploy script each time you want to push the updates. So that's going to actually deploy the app. And in the meantime, while that's finishing, I'll show you. Oh, I also have in this registration there are server server side validation messages coming back. So that if you try to use an email address that's already been registered, you would get that here. And this is just in Bootstrap 4. Let's see. It's almost done. Once this is done, I should be able to get to my template or to my to this app on template.com, which is which is where I set up the the A record. Let's get in the configuration means it's almost done and it's done so I should be able to pull this up and there it is and also you'll notice that it's using SSL so the Ansible provision scripts have utilized let's encrypt to get a free SSL certificate so it's all set up and that's about it thanks for watching